Hello, I received this Android car stereo head unit thingy from Banggood the other day. This is one that they sent to me for review, so full disclosure, I did not pay for this. I try to keep that kind of thing to a minimum, but I'm not opposed to doing it every now and then. I, I actually get an email from somebody at Banggood every month, pretty much, asking if I want to do this, but I usually just ignore it. But I thought, you know, let's see what we can do. Uh, and I just bought a bunch of RC related stuff, so I didn't, didn't really have anything of that kind to be uh, getting, but I have had this on my wish list for a long time basically since I moved back here from Japan and my the thing that I have in my car it's for Japan and just it's useless here basically but because I only use my car about once a week I just haven't really it hasn't been a high priority but I thought hey if I can get one for free well let's give it a try uh, so just to have a look at what this thing is it's Android based which is very important um, a lot of these cheaper ones you can get, you can get some extremely cheap, I think $28 I've seen here on Banggood as well. Um, but they're not Android based, so you're stuck with just a very basic music player that's uh, some sort of a unknown proprietary thing that you can't really make additions to. But the thing about Android is you can download stuff from the App Store and basically run anything that you can run on your Android phone or tablet, which is awesome because I can make things for this, right? Because I can program my own apps. Um, the other important thing is that this has GPS and Wi-Fi, so the, the $28 ones, obviously, they don't have this kind of thing either. So if you're looking for something that has GPS, Wi-Fi, and is Android-based, you're probably going to be looking at $80 or so at least, I think. Uh, but yeah, $100 is where they, they seem to get. This is the minimum that I would be bothered to get. There was something about the $80 ones I didn't really like. There was something missing. I can't remember what it was. But anyway, if you have GPS and Wi-Fi, this means you can actually use it as a car navigation thing because the GPS will tell the car where it is. And with the Wi-Fi, you can use the internet from your cell phone. At least in my case, I'll be using my uh, cell phone as a tethering hotspot. Um, it also says steering wheel control. I'm not totally sure what that means, but we'll have a look at the wiring on the back of this. And there's a couple of wires that that might be related to. So I'll just scroll down here and those are the specs there. Although I'm, I'm not entirely sure that the one that they've sent me is what's listed here because it has a different model number on the front and there's a few other slightly different things about it. For example this one here, if we look over there in the bottom left corner there's <coughs> a USB plug and an auxiliary audio input and then just above that there's an empty space but the one I have it actually has a micro SD card slot in there as well so you can put two like flash disks on this at the same time which is quite handy and the screen here with all the icons I think that's just been photoshopped in as we'll see when we look at my one uh, it looks a little bit a little bit different a little bit more customized um, anyway what else is there to look at here just a bunch of generic guff these um, they all seem to be fairly generic too. these things that's why you see very similar ones that have different model numbers uh, anyway so that's the page there uh, so let's start by should we look at the back we look at the front let's look at the look at the front and we can see on the front here we have microphone res whatever that is um, this button here we'll see is a mute button or it can be used to uh, sort of make the device sleep and we have volume up and down micro SD card there auxiliary audio input and then a USB host which is pretty nice because you can put any any sort of a device that Android can recognize like a, a USB mouse or a keyboard even um, and you can put in obviously a flash drive if you've got some music on your flash drive or you can put an F FTDI adapter and go chasing balloons with your NRF24 L01 receiver which is one of the things that I thought it might be quite good to have this kind of a thing to do with because um, what I've been doing so far is just using my tablet and I put it on the seat beside me and it's, it's, it's annoying because it sort of slips around when you're driving and the other thing is that when the tablet's powering the NRF module uh, while you're driving the, the tablet itself the battery is wearing down uh, whereas this is going to be powered by the car and it's going to be nicely securely mounted in the dashboard um, anyway so that's that's just the th sort of things that were going through my mind as I was uh, considering what I should get here. Alright, so this is the main plug there. You'll see the two plugs or the two pins on the far left are a little bit larger than the rest of them. Those are for ground and power. And there's a 10 amp fuse. Down here we have something that says 4G, but there's nothing in there on this one. So perhaps some of these head units can actually do 4G access. Likewise here, GPS has nothing there, but 
there is a GPS antenna connection there. Uh, the radio there I think would be for your normal FM AM radio on your car and then we have a bunch of plugs there which we will look at in a second this is all aluminium here on the back well at least yeah I'm pretty sure it's not steel it's aluminium I would think uh, so it's quite quite slim and you get a couple of brackets to help mount that in your car a largely useless manual which doesn't really tell you a whole lot that you couldn't really figure out from uh, just looking around the menus yourself and it's only like five pages long so not not particularly useful I don't think you'll be looking at that too much alright so here is the main connector as we saw just before the two larger pins on the left there are the ground and power and you might have thought that they would be red and black but they're actually red uh, sorry, they're actually yellow and black there. They're slightly larger too. Uh, so they sort of, they do stand out from the other ones a little bit. And then <clears throat> just connecting those two alone is not enough to get the thing to start up. So that's these two I'm talking about here. So these two will be permanently connected to power there. And then this red one here is what I would call an enable um, pin, I was going to say pin because I'm used to talking about Arduino and microcontrollers and stuff, but this this wire would be the enable wire, so when this one is also connected to 12 volts then the unit will start up. And the reason that you don't just um, have one of these is so that the device can sleep and sort of store its state while the car is off, while the car is not running, while the ignition of the car is off, that is. Uh, and that just makes it quicker to start up again because if you were to completely uh, power down by by disconnecting both of these here it takes about 20 seconds to start up the next time so it's kinda slow if you were getting in your car and you actually wanted to quickly do something on the tablet I mean on the Android thing 20 seconds is a bit slow but if you keep this one powered up and then you just use this one as the enable it only takes four seconds because it sort of goes into a lighter sleep state anyway uh, what else do we have here there is, let's start with these two which are called key 1 and key 2 now these two I'm not exactly sure what they are but I think they might be related to the steering uh, what was it called there? steering wheel control or something? steering wheel control yeah um, now I'm not too familiar with Chinese but from my knowledge of Japanese, the first two character mean, characters mean direction and the last one means like control or or to limit something. Not sure what the third and fourth ones are but I'm presuming that the these are sort of a direction button like an up down button on a menu so maybe you could have a button on your steering wheel that's going up and down um, to like select the next song in the playlist or something like that. Uh, then we have let's look at this one next, auto antenna this one I believe will be powered with 12 volts when the radio is in use so that will extend the powered antenna if you have one on your car and then we have brown which is back and when this receives 12 volts the whatever was on the screen that you were looking at will go away and it will show you the input from an analog camera which you can connect to this one so we'll look at that in a second and whenever this goes back to ground or becomes floating again then the tablet will just go back to whatever it was doing before so this is what you would use as a reversing camera switch and it just overrides whatever was happening uh, presumably you're not going to be in reverse for very long so it's okay to just override whatever you're doing um, and if you're driving backwards you probably shouldn't be looking at the screen of this anyway um, yeah so that's brown what else have we got alright there's this orange which from looking around the net this is usually a an input and when this gets 12 volts or yeah what else would it be 12 volts I suppose when this gets 12 volts I think the backlight in these buttons will turn on um, I think that that backlight function there is mainly for older radios where you don't actually have a screen where you're looking at stuff but presumably there is a backlight in here I haven't actually checked uh, but if there was no backlight yeah you wouldn't be able to see those would you so I'm not sure if I'll use that or not 
By the way, I'm not going to look put this in my car in this particular video. I'm just going over all the details here at the bench and trying it out just just here. And I'll put it in my car and test it a bit and then show you another video later of how it goes after a couple of weeks of use or something like that. And the reason I'm not going to put it in the car right now is that we all have different cars, so um, how, the, how the wiring goes in your car will be possibly different. And I think these plugs are kind of standardized too, so I might not even need to do any wiring connection myself with this. I might be able to just pull the thing out of my car and plug plug this plug into that, perhaps. I don't know. Uh, anyway, so <laughs> getting to the end of these wires finally. So then there's eight wires here, which is just the left and right front and rear speakers and they're in pairs of colors so they come like this there's a white and then there's a white with the black stripe like those two and then you have the same thing so there's purple and then purple with the black stripe and green and uh, whatever the other one was white gray yeah so anyway there's eight eight uh, four pairs of wires that are going to be audio outputs and I'll connect this up to a speaker and everything in a minute so we can hear some audio. Right, so these other plugs we have are, this one says audio out as well. So that's left sound something output and then out right, out left. These are probably fairly familiar to people from audio systems. However, I, I did not get any audio out on these when I was trying it before. So I'm not sure what they're supposed to be for. I did get audio on those ones, of course. Uh, then we have AV input, so this would be for your reversing camera. I don't think I'm going to really bother with this because I live in New Zealand where we have plenty of space for reversing typically. If I still lived in Tokyo I would possibly be interested in using this because the streets are a lot narrower and there's just it, space is a lot tighter there so it might have been useful over there but I don't think it is in New Zealand really. Uh, and then there's a purple wire which I have no idea what that's for unfortunately. <laughs> uh, Alright, over here we have another unlabeled RCA that is yellow. Not sure what that is, unfortunately. So none of this stuff is in the manual, by the way. The manual only mentions stuff about the the Android like screens itself. Uh, then there's a couple of little white wires on here, which at first I thought were for nothing, and I just sort of ignored them. However, viewers of my channel may have already figured out what these two little wires are for. They're not for nothing. Perhaps if I put them at 90 degrees to each other like that and I pointed out that they are about roughly 30 millimeters long. Okay, now you get it, don't you? Well, I initially I did not get it and I couldn't figure out why I was having so much difficulty getting a Wi-Fi signal. It was very sketchy. Uh, and then as soon as I plugged this in, away she goes. The Wi-Fi was The Wi-Fi signal was quite good after that. So they are antennas. Don't cut them off or throw them away. All right, now we have this plug, which is a USB input. I haven't actually tried this one, but I'm presuming maybe you can just connect another flash drive or something. Why isn't it focusing? Anyway, you can see what that is. And then we have a GPS antenna with a fairly long cable. Looks like about a meter, perhaps. Not that you'd really need it that long, I don't think. And rather small antenna. I was, I was expecting this would be a little bit bigger, but it's, uh, it's fairly small. It's sort of like three and a half by three centimeters. And it has a SMA... yeah, SMA I think that was. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, let's power it up and see what it does. Okay, to start off with, I'm going to run it from this adjustable power supply, which has a meter display here, so we can see how much power it's drawing. Excuse the noise, it's a little bit noisy, this one, but I'll switch to something else later on. Uh, so I have the negative connected to ground there, and then I have the uh, positive voltage connected to the yellow. And, oh, we will turn this on too, don't we? All right, so we're outputting 12 volts, but nothing happens. So this red wire that I was calling the enable wire will also connect that to 12 volts too. So I have this yellow wire just going to 12 volts there. And when we connect this one, then we'll actually see something happening on the screen, I hope, or else I'll look stupid. <laughs> I look stupid. Oh, no, there it is. Okay, so now this is the slow, what I called... Uh, well, it's like a cold start, basically, because the, the, the unit was completely off and it's having to boot up completely so 
I'll I'll time this. I won't wait for the whole thing, but it's about 25 seconds maybe. Okay, so now it's ready to go, and I'll just put on the screen here how long that took. I think it was about 25 seconds. Anyway, so now if we oh, uh, so the point of that was to look at the power draw. I have never seen it go over 800 milliamps, maybe 820 milliamps or something. Yeah, never more than 900 milliamps. So you're looking at around about, uh, let's say 10 watts maximum. Even when it was doing, uh, I ran some Android benchmarks things, so it was running the CPU, or all four CPUs apparently, as fast as they could go, and um, it still never went over 10 watts. So it doesn't use that much power. Anyway, when I power this down, we'll see that the screen turns off, but it's still powered up. So that's the, the yellow one is the main power that's still connecting it to the, the car's battery. And it's sort of doing a, it's getting ready to sleep or something. Now you'll see the power drops to nothing, almost. So this is what your, oh, it went. Well, that's weird, I've never seen that before. It went up for a bit again and then it dropped. Anyway, so what it will be sitting at while your car is parked at the shopping mall or whatever you... Hey, you see that? It went up again. Maybe it's still doing something every now and here. Huh. I don't recall seeing that before. Look at that, there it goes again. I wonder what that is. Huh. Well, that's good to know. <laughs> so anyway, if you leave your car sitting for two or three weeks and you never use it I only use my car once a week so I, I was a little bit concerned about what this thing would be using from my car battery uh, for seven days while I'm you know not the battery's not being charged basically that's what I was worried about look at that it's doing something every now and then huh that's weird I did not see this yesterday when I was playing around with it but anyway when I connect this up again we should be looking at so I'll go zero one two three Four, four and a half, maybe five seconds. So that's what I would call a warm start, and that's that. What's if you install this properly and you do the wiring like I've done it here, you should only be waiting four seconds each time you turn the car ignition on to to have this showing up and you can actually do something. Okay, I now have it hooked up to a different power supply, one that's not so noisy, and I've also hooked up a loudspeaker so that we'll be able to hear some of the audio coming from this. And unfortunately my webcam is doing a terrible job of showing you what this actually looks like because <laughs> see the text at the top of the screen there? We can't even really see it, but if I bring it into the middle of my webcam view, uh, it looks fine. And we can actually see that it's quite clear and it's yellow, whereas can't even it looks kind of pink there and you can't even see it. So unfortunately, you'll just have to keep in mind that what you're seeing in this particular video view is not really as good as it looks. If I look down here and I let it focus for a minute, it actually looks quite good. And this screen is a fairly decent resolution screen. It's um, 1024 by, come on, there we go, 1024 by 600 pixels, which is pretty decent. I don't, I don't think you need much more for this purpose. Anyway, so just keep that in mind. It's a little bit of a shame. And the other issue that for right now is that I've had to turn my lights off so we can see the screen properly and I can't. I'm going to have to turn them on just a little bit to show you the off screen buttons here. So we have this one which is, as I mentioned before, this is a, it has two functions. If you tap it briefly, you'll get a mute icon showing up here and the audio will just completely mute and a short tap again will unmute it. If you hold that down for one second or two seconds or something, one second I think, it will turn the device off or make it sleep or something. And in this sleep mode, there's another sleep mode I'll show you in a minute, but in this sleep mode, touching the screen does nothing. You need to tap this button again, um, short press I think, to do that, and that will wake it up again. Then we have uh, volume up and down, and that also has an on-screen component. If I hold my finger down there, You'll see that going, and if you're quick, you can grab that and move it. Uh, this one, admittedly, is pretty... It doesn't move very nicely. I don't like it that much. <laughs> and it's hard to grab it, and it disappears quickly. So I think I'll just be using these ones over here to change the volume when I'm actually using it. Um, now, the other sleep mode... Let me just... 
turn my lights off again. I think we'll go with this. This seems to give a slightly better picture, although maybe every now and then I'll have to just pick it up and show you what it really looks like in certain locations like this. Anyway, the other sleep mode is this sunshine button, or it looks like a brightness button. That's what I thought it was at first. But if you tap that just briefly, oops, it um, just turns the screen off. But this sleep mode will be woken just by a simple touch touch on the screen. Not really sure what the purpose of this would be. Maybe maybe if you're driving at night, the screen would be a bit bright and it'd be annoying. You can just make it dark inside the car so that you can see outside the car better. Maybe that's what that's for. I don't know. Um, then we have the typical buttons that you've seen on Android where you can look at all the apps that are running in the background and then there's the back button and then there's the home button over here. So when you first power this up you will be confronted with this screen. This is what it seems to do every time, at least from a cold start, it will start with this. And this is obviously the radio app and if you're interested it goes from 87.5 to 108 so for New Zealand that's good and I saw somewhere in one of the um, system menus that you can change that band but I haven't really looked at it and I actually haven't looked at this too much because can we hear anything there? Okay you should be able to hear a bit of hissing in the background there but um, I don't have any antennas and I, I tried scanning just here at the bench with no antennas and I couldn't get any radio to listen to with without plugging in the antenna. But anyway, I, I trust that it will work once the antenna is connected and you just search through frequencies like this and it's not going to find anything. But um, anyway, that's the radio and there's some presets there. Um, what is this one? Oh, this is a fader I think so you can make it go further to the left or the right or the back of your car or whatever. Um, sorry, I'm having a bit of trouble seeing my screen. I've got, I've got this webcam sitting right in front of my face. I can't quite see exactly what I'd like to see. Um, so this button here, which you use to look at all the other apps that are currently running, I noticed that that doesn't work if you just do a short press. Maybe some Android versions are like this, but I've never seen it before. This one you have to hold hold it down for a bit and then you can see the other apps that you've got running. So I've got my radio and the equalizer looks like it's a different app. Uh, and you can just swipe to get rid of those like that. And you should be able to hear that the uh, radio has stopped. Um, then we have some other apps. I won't look at these all because they're f fairly common on Android like this one here. We know what that is, I hope. Um, Bluetooth, ES File Explorer, uh, so settings, we'll just have a quick look at that because this is where you would try and find your settings for Android and what you're looking for is probably this one here, system settings. And this, oh, it's quite dark. Hmm. Well, this webcam is really annoying me today. It looks quite dark here for some reason. Anyway. Uh, so this is a, a rather cut down version of what you'd normally see on your Android settings uh, app or screen. So you have your Wi-Fi password input there and um, a few other things. One thing I was a little bit disappointed to see here is that under display, normally you have an option to... Is it display? No, it's not. Sorry. It's um, security, I think it was. Under security, normally you're able to set a password. So I'm just wondering... Like next month I have to take my car in to get a warrant of fitness and it'd be nice if I could put a password on it so that people, other people who, who are in the car and driving it around um, can't just look at my email and everything because like an Android tablet you, you sign into your Google account and um, if you can't put a pin on it then whoever picks up the device can just you look at your email and everything. Um, so yeah, it's a bit puzzled to see that. What it's, it's grayed out and it says to use first set a screen lock. But I thought that was, I thought that's what I was doing here. Maybe under display it has it? No, it doesn't seem to have it. So anyway, I'm, at this point I can't quite figure out how to put a password on it. But uh, anyway, so this is typical Android settings, except that there's not many of them. So that's it, basically. That's all the settings that you get. I'm pretty sure in um, regular Android there's a lot more than that. All right. Uh, so then we have software version which 
it shows you some stats like that. There's an update thing there, which I'd be a little bit scared to use, to be honest. I think I'd probably just leave that alone. Auto settings. Uh, this is where we have the radio region, which I was just saying about. So set to China. What else have we got here? I haven't tried this. Japan, USA, Europe, Latin, <laughs> China. Well, China was looking pretty good for me, actually. So I'll just leave it on that one. SWC, come on, focus. SWC, no idea what that is. Illuminate Detect, I think that would be the orange wire that we saw before that was used, possibly used to light up the backlight on the buttons on the on the left over over there. Uh, Brake Detect, not sure what that's for. Back car, aux line, uh, oh, I'll have to show you that in a minute. Um, camera mirror. Oh, yeah, 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 I suppose you can flip the camera left to right. Track draw. These look like options for the backing camera, maybe. So I'm not. I haven't used much of these. Reverse audio hanging button. Maybe settings. No. Anyway, that's what we have under there. Uh, music and video will do nothing at the moment because I don't have any media in here. So it's just going to say no video like that, and the other one says no audio. Actually, no. It says it says. No music. Come on, stop wasting my time. There you go. No music. I thought this was going to be for music, but it's for music. Anyway, uh, something that you can use Bluetooth music, and then there's aux in, which I think right now it just says no signal again. I'm not sure if this is the back reversing camera or not, but um, the reversing camera also says no signal when you can when you try and use that. Anyway, next screen. Chrome web browser, downloads folder, clock, Play Store, Google settings. Uh, this easy connected thing lets you mirror another Android device. So I tried this. Apparently you can do it over Wi-Fi, but I couldn't figure that out. But I did manage to do it by plugging my Android tablet into here. And after a little bit of setup, you can make it so that whatever you're doing on your Android tablet will be just shown on this car screen as well. Not really sure why you'd want to do that, but um, you can if you want to. Uh, GPS test is a uh, focus. God, this is really getting annoying, isn't it? It's a GPS test app, which uh, just shows you which satellites, how many satellites are on view, and the strengths of them, and it'll show you your ground speed and heading and altitude, the time, uh, and it has that sky view map, so you can see where above you the satellites are and it has this other one here which none of this is going to work now because my GPS antenna is not connected but it actually worked quite well I was surprised it doesn't work quite as well as the um, Ublox M8N that I have in most of my drones and stuff but almost as good I would say almost as good as that uh, and there's a button over here which we can make this into night mode for some reason and there was something else up here that was interesting. Settings. Oh, there's a bunch of settings for that. Anyway, that's quite interesting just to see that your GPS is working and everything. Okay, so that's the end of the apps that are on the device when you get it. But obviously with the Play Store here we can put on whatever we like and we can use Chrome. Is this going to work now? I think this will work. This will just give you an idea of the Wi-Fi speed. Um, so it's decent, decent Wi-Fi speed. My, my Wi-Fi here in at this farmhouse is um, not very good, but yeah, the, you can see the touch response in some apps is not that great. Overall, the touch response seems to be very good for simple presses like that of a button. That's that's fine, but whenever it comes to dragging it's a little bit sluggish so it's okay I think I mean I'm not gonna be doing this too much but it's definitely not what you're used to if you have a nice phone or a nice tablet um, but all things considered for a device that's of this price and everything it's that's not too bad anyway that's web browser um, Play Store hey sorry my I've got to get my finger in the right place and I'm just getting a little bit annoyed by these brackets that I've got here. I keep getting crooked. 
And the camera's getting in my way and I can't press the button in the right place. Anyway, that's what I was trying to do. Uh, so Play Store is the Play Store and... Oh, cool. What? Why don't I have... Oh, hang on a minute. Uh, do, do, do. I thought we were okay for Wi-Fi. Let me just see if I can figure out why the Wi-Fi is not going. Why is it not on? Oh, maybe because I did a cold start. Now you'd think you'd think that um, a cold, even with a cold start, it would still remember to turn Wi-Fi on. It's taking a bit of time too. Okay, it was a little, a little slower than it was before. Oh yeah, so you get the normal pull down notifications thing that you get with Android. So that <laughs> that web page that we saw just before was actually not um, coming across the network. That was let's try that one. That was just a cached page, I guess. All right, now we're actually loading it over the network. I'd say. So it's not not the greatest browsing experience, but considering it's a car computer or a oh, I was loading that page. Hmm. Yeah, all right. So it's it's decent, but yeah, these dragging. I, I'm I'm not really sure why the dragging response is a bit sloppy in some apps because. If I just move along with what I was going to show you next, the next page here, you can just focus on this damn thing. There we go. All right, so these apps here I have installed myself from the App Store. And the first one here shows us some stats in a moment. There we go. All right, so these are the stats of the device according to this app. Says it has four CPUs running at 1.3 gig. Not all of them all the time, but you know they're there. Uh, so I just flip through these pages because this is quite an interesting app to look at if you're wondering what exactly you have in your hands. That there. Incidentally, the hardware specs of this here are roughly comparable to my Samsung Galaxy S3 from 2008 or whenever that was made no 2000 yeah whenever anyway battery it thinks it has a battery <laughs> um, these temperatures seem a little high not, not sure if they're actually oh they're changing though aren't they maybe there are some sort of a temperature on it uh, oh oh this is an ad because I haven't paid for this app that's all hold on <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, under sensors, there's actually nothing at all, at least nothing that shows up in this list. Accelerometer, proximity, and light. Usually there would be some values shown over here. If I look at this on my cell phone, this screen is chock full of stuff like barometer and gyroscope and proximity sensor and light sensor and all that stuff. But this device doesn't have anything really. About is, oh, that's just about this app itself. All right, so that's that. Uh, next app that I got was this one here and you'll see that this app seems to do the drawing just fine so I'm not sure if it's an issue with the um, some of those apps like the browser wasn't that great maybe it's just because the browser is dealing with more information and it's trying to do network stuff in the background whereas all we're doing here is a, a pretty simple thing Oops. Um, but what I've noticed is that if you do something quick, so if I do this, now I put a little bit of an extra flick on here, but it detected my finger being lifted off the screen before it detected the movement of the touch to go around there like I like I actually did. So it's it's a little bit weird, but I think it's pretty acceptable for a car computer again. Okay, maps works just fine at least when you have a GPS plugged in and a Wi-Fi connection. I'll just back out of that YouTube um, this also works quite well this is probably something I will be using quite a lot <laughs> I bet I'm just gonna be driving along what oh come on maybe that's why the other thing was a bit slow I just updated these 
like yesterday. I don't know why. Anyway, so there's um, hey, there's uh, MKBHD. Let's just see what it looks like to play YouTube video or an ad at least. Alright, so the this is just my network here. It's not really that fast. It should be a bit fast. I would have expected it to show up by now. I wonder what resolution this is. So that was auto 240p. So anyway, it's it looks terrible in the webcam view that you're looking at here, but. By just sort of, okay, hello. <laughs> and because that view is changing, it's not going to focus very well. But you just have to take my word for it; it looks fine. I might have to record a little bit of video with my handy cam afterwards because I don't think my handy cam would have this much trouble showing you this view. Uh, oops, done that one. All right, so. Hey. Okay, thanks, Marcus. We're we're done. Anyway, that's YouTube. Um, oh, and <laughs> I tried this too, ground control. So this is another thing you could use this for, actually. You could use this as your Arduplane ground station. Did I start that? I think I, did I start that or what? Well, that's weird. I was using that yesterday and it was fine. Hmm. Oh, so again, we can hold this down, get rid of these things, maps, draw. See, the touch is a bit dodgy sometimes. I mean, the swipes are dodgy. Wow, it's out of focus too, isn't that, isn't that great for you? Are you enjoying this video? <laughs> out of focus, out of color? Ugh. And let me try that again. I'm I'm not sure why. Oh, there we go. Now it works. I definitely pushed it properly before. But anyway, this is um, probably not going to do much. Oh, there we go. Uh, and I plugged in one of these. Uh, let me just plug that in and I'll show you that it works because I thought this was kind of neat. Where did that? Initializing flight mode. <laughs> Fail safe, short event on, type equals one, reason equals three, circle flight mode, fail safe, long event on, type <laughs> equals two, reason equals three, Shush. return to launch flight mode. Alright, let's, uh, alright, so just to show you that this works as well, so I'm just uh, looking at the heads up, or the artificial horizon thing there, Your, it's all working great, so you could use this to do uh, settings. Parameters. You change. I'm not very familiar with this app yet, but as far as I know, you can do most of the settings that you can do with the Windows-based Mission Planner. Anyway, that's uh, that's enough of that. Get rid of that. Now, what else was I going to look at on here? Oh yeah, this is supposed to be a media player, isn't it? So. Let's try some music and video, which I have on this little flash drive. Well, it's a, it's a micro SD card that goes into a USB. So I'm not going to try the micro SD card, but you'll just have to take my word for it that if you plug the micro SD card into the little slot there on the side, it will work exactly the same as what I'm about to do with the, uh, the actual USB plug there. So you could do two of these at the same time, I think. And when I plug this in, oh, what's this? Ground control. <laughs> Focus, please. There we go. So it's detected that something's gone in there, and that's not what we want to do, though. Um, so we want to go, oh, by the way, you can hold the button, uh, hold your finger down here to move between these screens like that, and you can put some widgets and change the wallpapers here as well. Uh, so on this screen, we'll do video. And 
Last time I did this. Oh, no. Let's turn that up a little bit. Oh, this guy. Busy guy, isn't he? There you go, that's uh, the wonderful Home Slice 2. Now, this video, I think. Oh, whoops, sorry. Went out of the app there. That's not what I was trying to do. Did I touch that? Could have sworn I touched it. Something's a bit off here, eh? Oh, I see what's going on there. If you hold it a little bit too long, it thinks you're going to do this and move them around. So you actually have to make that tap quite quick. Yeah, I'm starting to figure it out. There's a little, there's a few little quirks to it like that. Anyway, um, so that video we're just looking at there is 720. 1080p is also okay. 1440p is not, and I noticed on the Banggood listing it said it only supports up to 1080p which seems a little bit odd, but perhaps this has been done by a hardware decoder, in which case it would only be able to accept certain formats, I guess. I don't see why a software decoder would not be able to do whatever you told it to. Maybe it would be slow, but it should be able to do any format. So maybe this is hardware decoding. If I try 1440p, you can maybe hear that there's a sound playing, but there's no picture. <laughs> um, 1080p is okay, though. So that's fine and we can jump around in this video at a reasonable speed like it doesn't take too long to get to the point where you've uh, scrubbed to. Actually what does it do scrubbing like? No, it doesn't want to scrub but if you just put it somewhere it'll go there pretty quickly. Um, and the other thing that we wanted to look at was music and this is where I get <coughs> demonetized probably so it remembers remembers the last place you were listening to and so we can Oh, this scrubs all right. Oh, no, it doesn't. It, it respond the slider responds quicker, but it can't play the audio while you're doing it. And from here we can jump to the fader, which is actually a separate app. And I think if I go this way, it's going to go quiet. If I go up there, it's get a bit louder. Reset. Anyway, I think you get the idea. Um, oh, and the important thing is you can leave the audio playing. This doesn't work with video, I don't think, but with audio, uh, the radio and the music app, you can leave those running while you go and do something else. Where are we? Um, namely, maps is what I'd like to be looking at while I'm listening to the music. So that's fine. This actually seems to drag reasonably well, which is strange. <laughs> oh, by the way, you can do multi-touch too. I don't know if you can do like three touches, but you can definitely do two. So I can twist this around like that, and zoom in and stuff. Zoom in and out. Okay, so um, that's probably quite enough for one video, isn't it? Um, so I'll put this in my car and maybe in another couple of weeks from now I'll upload another video showing maybe maybe some problems came up or something, I don't know, but I, I can't really foresee any issues arising. Uh, like I said, the GPS it works fairly well, that was the only other thing that we haven't really checked here at the bench, but I, I have checked it and it works quite nicely. Uh, so if you watched all of this video, what's wrong with you? <laughs> anyway, so until then, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.